as Matthew McConaughey would say. All right, all right, all right. Oh, this is amazing. Good morning. My last full day here in Morelia. A uh, bunch of local foods I haven't tried yet, and this, this is really interesting. Fruit for breakfast, but there's a local dish here called gazpacho. Now, when you hear gazpacho, you're gonna think cold soup. But here, it's a fruit dish. I'm gonna eat it for breakfast. Fruit for breakfast, I'm being healthy today. Let's go. So this place, first thing you do is pay for your food. Uh, you get a number, you wait at station number one. So there's four stations and you're gonna choose your fruits. They're gonna ask you what you want on there. I have no idea what to put on there right now. And then you get to dress yourself. So it's a it's bit of a complicated combinational process. I, I need Carlos with me on this. So you got pineapple, mango, and jicama, yeah, which yeah. is a Mexican fruit. Yes. It kind of tastes like a little starchy, almost like a water chestnut texture. I guess I'll get, get these three. And they basically put the fruits on a, on a chopping board. And what's kind of interesting is they're adding salt, onions, uh, chilies onto the fruits. More chili powders going on. And they're mixing it all together, kind of like you would do a chopped salad or something. Cheese, once it's in the container, they're going to splash on some orange juice, of course, citrus, some lime. So this is really interesting breakfast. I mean, they submerge it in orange juice. More cheese on top. All right, this is looking fruity and uh, citrusy and very cheesy. Gracias. All right, this is it. Tons of spices, fruits, juice, cheese. Things that you typically wouldn't think um, really belong together. And you just give it a nice mix. Hmm, that's surprising, it works really well. It's fruity, it's juicy. The Kikoma provides that nice crunch. It's both a sweet, refreshing, juicy breakfast as well as a savory, spicy, sort of sort of cheesy soup. And that might sound really, really odd, but it's sweet, it's spicy, it's juicy, it's crunchy, it works. I see a lot of people adding more chilies into this, so uh, let's try that. And Carlos recommended these two. This is the house-made chili sauce with honey. Mm. It's not really spicy, but it's very fruity. And then the Mexican hot sauce, Valentina. I think just a little bit of this. Well, it's much savorier. I, I think for some reason I made it taste more like a like a chili broth almost. I think I liked it more when I left it alone, and it was just like sweet, a little salty, a little spicy. Now it's like pretty spicy, pretty salty, a little sweet. And the thing is, this is gonna be really acidic. So um, if you have a lot of stomach acid, this is not gonna make that better. All right, I'm gonna just add one more sauce in here. This is the chamoy sauce, and it's kind of like a like a citrusy fruity, spicy sauce. Oh, this is very fruity, a little spice, lots of citrus. I should have put more of this sauce. This would have been really, really good. Again, this dish native to the area. Gotta try when you come here. All right, gotta finish dish. Next up, going for some tortoise. Finally, one of my favorite Mexican foods, tortoise. And the place we're going to is called Torta Guadalajara. Smelling good in here. This is the most splendid taco I might have seen on the street. I mean, it's my second day. More splendid tacos may appear, but this, how do you top a taco just, just covered, covered in chili? This is called 
taco algado. And algado means to, to dip things in water, which is why these tacos are swimming in this spicy red broth. What's so lovely about this is the outside of the taco, not just the inside, the outside is covered with meat. There's carnitas on the inside and the outside. Let me algado this more. Look at all this crazy amount of carnitas sitting on the bottom of this broth. That's what you call going diving for treasure. As Matthew McConaughey would say, all right, all right, all right. This is not a non-messy dish, but holy potato. There's potatoes on the inside of this taco as well. Oh man, that heat is penetrating my soul. It's definitely missing a little citrus. Let's just take care of that right now. Carnitas, beautifully tender. And with that potato, It's like the taco guys came down and gave this a sloppy, wet, spicy kiss. This is absolutely amazing. From the crunchy tortilla, to the gentle potatoes, to the spicy broth, to the tender carnitas. It's like the most glorious of taco ingredients. Decides to all have a pool party right here. Even just looking at this, it's a sight to behold. I feel like Emerald should be saying BAM right now. Oh, that potato is glorious. Still probably give you a heartburn, but you know what? That, that, that just, that's just a taco's way of saying, don't forget about me. But hey, let's not get sidetracked. Uh, I was here for tortoise and I was just completely got mesmerized by this beauty here. Bring on the tortoise. I'm gonna save some of the soup and dip the tortoise in there. I already have the plan formulated in my head. Gracias, gracias. I was saving some of the broth for this, but apparently there's no need. This brought his own spicy pool to the party. Get it, pool part. They all got all the tortoise. Whole thing went into that spicy, oh, inferno of a broth. Let me just shower some love onto this thing here. This is this is how you shower love onto a torta. Gonna add some onions in there. Oh. I don't know if you guys can tell, but uh, a little bit excited about this. I don't even know how to best do this. Let's just get messy with it, huh? Stuff with carnitas, all that juicy sauce, onions. Mm. Remember, slurp and bite, because you'll need to. There's so much broth in here. Now, this is my favorite part. Took a bite, I think this needs another little dunk. There's nothing I don't love about this. This is one of the greatest ways I've ever had a taco or a torta. If you love heat and you love a saucy taco or a saucy torta, you gotta come and try this place. My mouth is on fire. Ugh, I'm sweating, but they brought over this dessert. Look at this. It's like a sort of a softer creme brulee. It's called a hirikaya. Mm. I think this is not just something you should get because it is absolutely delicious, but it's something that you need to get. Just as an apology to your tummy, because right now my stomach is a volcano. It has like two layers of custard. The top surface there, a little chewy. By the way, I want to mention one more thing about the tacos. Notice how they put the carnitas on the outside of the tacos? Beans, baby! Using things as glue. Food genius right there. And the price? Three tacos, 26 pesos. Less than two bucks. Same thing with the torta. Like I said, you're a spice lover, Gotta come here. Let's go get some more food. Right here, a little different type of taco. Not as intense. These are all very different though. These are steamed tacos. I'm just trying a bunch of all the different types of salsa. Ooh, hot oil. 
Oh, no wonder I felt a deep connection to Mexico. They have all the stuff that I love. Oh, this is amazing. So everything here from the filling to the tortilla is all steamed together. I'm almost speechless. This is way better than I thought. I mean, the wrapper is so soft. Probably some of the most tender I've ever been into in a taco. It doesn't have any toughness. This is just pure, gentle, delicate taco. A little bit of hot oil. Wow, cheese is good, but I mean, I'm digging the meat taco. The flavor of the filling is way more pronounced. It's just like a really light taco meal. All right, plate number two of steamed tacos. I got some uh, cochinita in here. I really love the aromatic flavor from this salsa. Let's begin with the cochinita. This is uh, something I love. Slow roasted pork. And you see all the seasoning sinked in to the tortilla because it's all steamed together. I like these almost better than a regular taco. It's just like ingredient tortilla fused together. This one I'm really excited about. Chicharrones. It's stuffed like a ginormous dumpling. There's some potatoes in here as well. I just had two super unique tacos. Super spicy, dipped in fire sauce, burning your tongue off tacos, and then steamed ones. And they couldn't be more different. One is just like, you know, aggressively punching your taste buds. One is just like coating them in a, in a delicate array of spices, ingredients, and flavor. Both you gotta try when you're in this city. Next stop. We're gonna meet someone really special. Change it up a little bit. We've been driving around, singing songs way too loud because we wanna. Picking up a love, friends, fill up the car to live best because we wanna. Yeah, we just wanna have fun. The trunk's full of wine. We're gonna stay up, have the time of our life. One of my favorite things to do in the world is visit different cathedrals. Went to St. Peace Cathedral in the Vatican. So far the most glorious I've ever seen. It looks different than any other place I've ever been to. This is the only cathedral where the door is facing north and not south. Usually cathedral's doors face south. Life's mysteries. Don't know why. All right, we're at the Restaurant Lou. This is like the historical center in Morelia. We're gonna meet someone really special, Chef Lucero Soto, celebrity chef here in Mexico. This restaurant is amazing. Let's go meet her. Ah, oh, this is Chef Lucero Soto. I heard so much about you. Oh, thank you. We yeah. are really good friends. Yeah? Since a long time ago. Since a long time ago. Yeah. I, I hear you're, you're just one of the most amazing chefs in Mexico. No, Got your own show, you. Celebrity Chef in Mexico. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's a pleasure that you are here. Oh, thank you, uh, thank you. The thing that you are going to enjoy tonight, yeah. uh, today, is passion about yeah. Michoacan, uh -huh. passion about food. Yeah. Are you joining thing. us? Yes. Yes. Yes, of course. Sweet, sweet. We are going to begin with this. Okay. This is the bread, the Spanish, they came with the bread, they Beans. came with the wheat, and they decide to make that preparation in a pre-Hispanic way of cook that is like a tamale. But it's actually wheat bread. Exactly. Interesting. It's bread, but it tastes that subtle sweetness. Mm -hmm. I like that. And a little chili. Oh, you just taste that roasted flavor. Mm -hmm. mm. Because everything is toast. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, it's like swimming in a pool of chocolate. And you know it's beans with a Morelian chili, but it's made different because don't doesn't have the tortilla, has the jicama, it's like a cousin of a potato. First of all, it looks like a food bridge across a uh, bean pond. Innovation with tradition is ripe. Oh wow, it's got everything, color, crunch, we got the silky smoothness from the avocado. Mm -hmm. But it's so flavorful, it has that depth of flavor. And you're just kind of like, what is that very deep flavor? Mm -hmm. And that's where the chilies come in. Exactly. Ooh. This is an, a traditional dish, mm -hmm. a paracho from the guitar. Mm -hmm. And it put into the oven for 12 hours. So this has been cooked in low heat for 12 hours. Ooh. Look at that. You 
come here, you gotta get this. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is a deliciously cooked lamb. The sauce is everything. It's almost like a curry. Almost like a curry because it, it is cooked with all the juices. Mm -hmm. And it has a little of chili. Yes. Very, very creamy. Very, a ton of flavor just concentrated in that seasoning right there with all the goodness of the juice from the lamb too. Melt in your mouth tender. No gaminess, but that in a set of little tortilla. Got a nice little crunch from the cactus. Yeah, that's great. Good job. Hey, woo! This is a uh, uchepo de leche. Made with corn. Milk. Milk. Uh huh. And sugar. Wow, there's so much I love about this. That is milky and pasty. It's like a sweet candy tamale almost. Guys, you gotta come check out the restaurant. Chef Soto's amazing. We're gonna eat up. There's more food to come. We're going to a candy factory. Yeah. Thank you to be here. It's a pleasure to see how you enjoy our food. Oh. And thank you that you can show us to how we cook and we can, how we see the flavors of Michoacan. Wow. It's, it's really my pleasure. So like, thank you, thank you so much. Thank great you. meeting you, Chef. That was an amazing meal. If you want a really good sit-down place with a great environment, authentic setting, that restaurant is where you should be going. Let me show you something I noticed about um, this area, though. This is really, I find it interesting. Look at these trees. I mean, it's it's been raining really hard. All right, this is drizzling now, but it was raining pretty hard. Look at this. Try us Nevada. It's like a natural umbrella. They're everywhere too. So everywhere in parks, like you don't have to bring your umbrella. Sit under a tree. Don't recommend it during a lightning storm, but otherwise, look at this. Well, I don't know. I find it interesting. Let's go to a candy factory. That was the owner of the of the candy museum. He's basically the candy man. <laughs> oh, this is the kitchen. This is all made by hand. Todo es hecho mano. Sí, es muy artesanal. La producción mañana lo va. Yes, yes, totally, totally. Sí, sí. Por aquí vamos a ver la historia. Mira. This is the history. Hasta el fondo. Mira, la la marca original se llamaba El Paraíso. First. Enterprise? Mm -hmm. 1840. Yeah, and the name was El Paraíso. Aparecio. Sí. Y esta es la foto más antigua oh. que tenemos and de la empresa. A, that's the full, first photo. Yeah, the first photo wow. for the first enterprise. Wow. Three generations. Mm -hmm. So this started way back then, 1595. So four over 400 years ago, if my Asian math is right. So the nuns came, created the candies to exchange for money for the monastery. Then uh, the first candy maker took the, collected the recipes, started creating candies for himself. I'm just summarizing the history here. Sold it to a gentleman who lost it in a car game to your father. Wow, I've never been inside like a candy factory and especially not one that's like everything is made by hand. We're gonna come back in the morning. We're gonna see how some of this candy is made. Can't wait for that. But let's go buy some. Let's go. I need to take some home. Thank you, Gerardo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go to taste it. Yeah, taste, of course. It's the best part. The name is Ate. Dice que por qué. Porque es el dulce que empezaron a hacer las monjas. Because this is the candy that the, that the nuns start to do. When the nuns were first started, starting to sell candy, they were selling this. And this is called Ate. Ate. It's like a soft jelly candy made with real fruits. A little tart, a little sour, sweet. Mm. Desarrolló mucho en la ciudad por la abundancia de frutas que hay en la región. The, the Ate develop a lot in this city because the, there are a lot of fruits in this region. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the reason. Yes. And the other product is, the name is Rompope. Mm. Rompope. Rompope. Let's, Let's go eat it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I've never seen so much sweets 
in my life sitting in front of me. So this is uh, what it feels like to be a kid in a candy store. This is the chocolate truffle cake. Oh, love the mousse, love the nougat that's in here. That's just intense chocolatey flavor. Oh, very, very good. This is the milkshake. Oh my God. Mmm. Oh yeah. This might be one of my favorite things. It's a milkshake, but it's so light. Uh, this, this milkshake has pasta ice cream. But usually when you drink milkshake, it's heavy. You feel boggled down, but this is made with mame, a Mexican fruit. Oh, I love this. So this is the Atean cheese. This is like what the nuns first offered hundreds of years ago when they're trying to raise money for the monastery. Mmm, it's like a crispy cheese cracker. Mm. It's to, to balance the sweet. Yeah, very cheesy. Yes. And then this is like a little ate cheese sandwich. Mm. That's the way to eat ate. Like everything they do here, all natural stuff. It's unbelievably good. Especially love the mame frappe. Mucho gracias. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Thank you. Check this place out. This is such a fun experience. Tomorrow we're gonna come back. We're gonna check out how he makes this stuff. I can't end the day on a, uh, on sweets. Maybe one more taco. One more. If you watched the vlog on my first day here uh, in Mexico, we tried to come here to eat tacos and they were closed. But according to Carlos, this is the best taco shop in the city. This shop is called Tacos Cornito. Oh, I'm so excited for this. One big difference between this place already than any other taco stand I've been to. Look at the quantity of the meat shoved into the tacos. I don't think you can physically fit any more meat in here. So we got chorizo, we got some tripe, and we got some beef. I'm gonna add a couple of the different sauces. And the thing to know is that in Mexico, you add your own salt in your tacos. Like a lot of times they don't add any salt in your taco meat. So I'll taste it and add salt accordingly. I'm gonna try the beef taco first. These are mind-blowingly good. This is the juiciest beef taco I've had in Mexico. Such a huge beefy flavor. And the salsa they make, spicy, vinegary. Look at that great fragrance from the cilantro. Seriously, this is as good as it gets. Whole family, traditional recipe, working together, cooking amazing tacos. For just a regular taco stand, for something as seemingly ordinary as beef tacos or chorizos, this is now the gold standard. This is under a dollar, it's like a 95 cent taco. Again, all the places I went to, listed down below. And also, Carlos, my good friend, my good friend for about 10 years, I, you know, only person I know in Mexico, called him up, showing me around. He's gonna start his own uh, tourism business now. Food tourism, especially Morelia, that's, that's where he's from. Yeah. So if you guys wanna come to Mexico, wanna go to Mexico City, Oaxaca, or any place in Mexico, give this, give this man a call. He knows where all the good food is. He'll take you around, take care of you. Yeah. So I'll put his information down below. It's a new business, because I noticed how good he was. I'm like, dude, why don't you do this for a living? And now he is. Okay. Yeah, so give him some support. Again, thank you so much for watching. This is a fantastic day. Okay, Thanks, you man. are welcome. You are welcome. Yeah. All right, guys, again, thank you so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later. See you later. A few moments later. You know what, I, I said one more, but I'm getting four more. This is just too good. And they put extra beef on here for me. I love this family. <laughs> I don't wanna leave. Well, they just gave me a cup of meat soup and they said put a little salsa in here. That's it, squeeze of lime. Oh man, oh that is a meaty soup. That's everything that's good in the taco meat. This is a fatty, meaty, substantial cup of soup. No wonder they said put sauce on here. Ah, it's all taco essence right here. You gotta taste this. If you love tacos, if you love meats and fat and cilantro and flavor. All right, we're gonna get to this. See you later.